sit down interview that you did with Austin and Rock before mm-hmm. WrestleMania 17. And obviously that, in the end, led to Austin's heel turn, and he's talked about it. He wishes he could go back and redo it, but that sit down interview is one of the most intense things that's ever went out on TV. Yeah, you know, we didn't rehearse it at all. We had no, we had no copy, we had no script. It's AEW style. There are no writers, there is no script in that respect. But we had two of the most talented people in the world and, and The Rock and Austin, but two guys I brought in. It's amazing how that happens. <laughs> you think a genius figure out The Rock was gonna be something kind of special. He never wrestled a match. He was, got cut from the Calgary Stampeders Canadian Football League. All I know is that every woman in the room came by to ask me wanted something to drink and most of them didn't even work there. <laughs> He was wearing a tank top. Thank God I wasn't. <laughs> and uh, they just wanted to get close to the great one. He wasn't even the great one at that time. He didn't have all those tattoos. He had the one Rama Bull tattoo. And that was the same night that he said, uh, or the same day, I remember what we had for lunch. Grilled chicken, black beans, and rice. <laughs> I did that line out of uh, when Harry met Sally. He, he ordered what he ordered. I said, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> I want to look like him someday. <laughs> Uh, but everybody loved the guy, and uh, but that was a good interview. Thank you for bringing it up. I, I, things like that happen. You kind of slip your mind, but boy, they were on, they were intense. That's the thing about that interview. I just all the, a good announcer just gets his ass out of the way. I feel like we're plugging the book a lot, but there's a lot of good stuff in the uh, the decision to turn Stone Cold heel, how it was made, who was for it, who was against it and all that went into it that I have never seen anybody talk about before, and that was probably the most fascinating part of the book from that era. All true. I was not for that deal. I had argued with him and argued with Vince because they wanted my opinion. The one thing that Vince said, that I'll leave it at this on that deal, we, we owe it to Steve, JR, to let it, to try it. And I said, under that context, you're right. We could not ask for any more from Steve. He's given us company. I mean, process how hot Austin was in 01 and how much merch he was selling and how much money the WWE was making off of that. And the owner of the company says, we owe it to this guy to try to just abandon and walk away from all that cash because the bad guys don't sell the merch. The good guys do. And it's just, it was a very big risk and ultimately one that didn't work out. But to go into that detail in the book was something I don't think anybody has ever talked about before. I think you'll enjoy it. You're an Austin fan and kind of interested in how the imaginations work behind the scenes on an issue and an angle that's that high up. But they don't get any bigger. You got, you know, I, I do a lot of, and I'm sort of, it's boorish, a lot of you. My phone saver is me and, uh, me at the, uh, uh, with John Wayne and Marino O'Hare, their statue, and uh, where they filmed The Quiet Man, my favorite movie. Uh, I can't remember that name of that town. Cork, what is it? Galway, Cork, Limerick. Is it Cork? Okay, Cork. Okay, there you go. So anyway, uh, that was a, uh, uh, John Wayne's my guy, because he was my dad's guy. Your dad only had one son. We spent more time watching football or John Wayne movies. That was our bonding time. Uh, but to me, and I told you to this, that'd be like Hollywood making, casting John Wayne as a Nazi. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and doing it in his home state. And doing it in the market. He grew up watching wrestling from he's and this didn't jaw jive. And uh, but it's a good read in that regard. Because there was some spirited conversation about it and and we did it, but and then of course two days later he's already having reservations. He meaning Steve for down boy again. Because he beat the dog shit out of me in Oklahoma City on SmackDown for trying to do an interview with him. Instead of cutting me with a razor blade, he cut me with a scaffold. And I was so naive and stupid and trying to show, because I already stood my ground. This is a bad idea. I don't think we should do it. But I'm going to, I could have stopped it anyway. But they, at least they respected me enough both Vince and Steve to ask my opinion. So I didn't want to do anything negative that would lead to the, well, he never did didn't like it. It wasn't his idea. Poor JR. <laughs> so I didn't complain about the scaffold. And it cut the shit out of me. I mean, it was stitches needed for for a fictional stunt. <laughs> and it just was not. And I afterwards, and he and he had these. Steve's hands are heavy. 
So he was so hellaciously hell bent on getting it over that he was laying it in very snugly. So when it was all said and done, I had three or four stitches in my head, still got a scar. You can take pictures of it later for 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny part, I had knuckle knots all over my goddamn head. Looked like these things. Boom, boom, boom. And so we get by the back and said, what the fuck was that about? Do I owe you money? <laughs> he says something to the effect, well, kid, we've got to make it look good We're on television. Live TV. I said, we're not on live TV, Einstein. It's tapes. It's Smackdown. <laughs> oh, he laughed. <laughs> good read, though. You'll, you'll have fun with it. Thanks for bringing it up, Conrad. It's, it's interesting when people read your, the advanced copy of your work, what sticks with them. And uh, so that, that means to me it's going to be a pretty good read. So you Some, check, check it out. Something to come off the back of that. It's not about the Austin heel turn, but coming out of the Austin heel turn, and I'm sure Conrad's got this on a list of questions one day to ask you, but when WrestleMania 17 finished, Rock was gone straight away to film a movie. So the guys that Austin was going up against were Undertaker and Kane or Benoit and Jericho. Was there a mindset with you guys in the company of who you wanted to be the big baby face to take Austin on? Well, look, we all in this room in hindsight would say the Austin turn might, might have been very ill-advised. The Rock leaving to, make, to start his movie thing really rolling, we didn't need to lose Rock to movies and Austin to being a heel. We weren't ready for that replacement. Who was going to be babyface 1C? Because 1A and 1B, are, they're not, no longer babyfaces. One of them's not even here. So I thought that was a poor planning. Of course, I'm booking shows. I'm doing the booking. I'm booking the house shows, the live events. I'm just trying to figure out who the damn babyfaces are going to be. Because I just lost it to the top that ever were, and we did it ourselves. It didn't make any sense to me. So I was little miffed at that idea, but uh, no, I don't, he, he was, uh, he was uh, within a few weeks of it turning, he became a comedic character. Remember the song, singing with Kurt and all that stuff? <laughs> he already saw it wasn't gonna work. And he's smart enough to say, look, my idea didn't work. We need to fix this. Just don't, just don't go there now. So they slowly brought him back around, but I just thought it was a waste of time and, and I still do. I still, I still, like I said, he called me Wednesday. When I, we get on that topic, I bust his balls on him now. That's about as stupid as that goddamn heel turn he did in WrestleMania 17. <laughs> oh, I know it. I do it. <laughs>